Hi there, I'm your English coach, Christina, and welcome to Speak English with Christina, where you'll learn American culture and business know-how to become confident in English. This episode is inspired by a question that I received from a student, Mohammed, from Egypt. He asked why the word to, when used in the middle of a sentence, is often shortened or not really pronounced. There are many examples of a word spoken with a weak stress, and it often confuses students of American English. If you've ever had similar questions about why certain words, such as to, are shortened or reduced or not fully pronounced, then this episode is for you. Let's go. Picking up on these nuances of spoken American English takes time. And one way to accelerate that mastery and learn faster is to have a program that shows you exactly how American English sounds, which words are weak, which words are emphasized, how, why, to help you with your comprehension and your pronunciation. In my program, Master Real American English, this is exactly what you learn and so much more. Students learn how to really accelerate their American English so that it becomes so much more natural and they become much more confident. In other words, this program, Master Real American English, teaches students the techniques to speak without translating in their head by knowing what they say is correct, but also realizing that the mistakes they make are not a problem so they can continue speaking fluently and confidently. The ability to think and to speak in English confidently can improve your conversations, strengthen your connections between your friends and coworkers, and also help you to advance in your career. If you want more information on that program, go ahead and click the link below this video and apply to join Master Real American English. As you listen to American English, especially in informal conversations, you have probably noticed that the word to is often shortened. And this is most common when to is a preposition in the middle of a sentence or it's part of an infinitive verb. When the word to is used in the middle of a sentence, we can often understand the meaning of the sentence without the word to being fully pronounced. For example, one of my students asked if it's possible to shorten the word to in a sentence such as, I'm trying to avoid traffic, for example. So you may have noticed that to was indeed shortened there, and it sounds like I'm trying to avoid traffic. I'm trying to avoid traffic. Or I'm trying to call a client to call, to call. Or I'm trying to hold a meeting here. I'm trying to hold a meeting. Or um, I think that belongs to John, to John, not to John. So do you hear how each time to is actually pronounced t. And the sound uh actually has a name. It's called a schwa. The schwa is a weak stress in a word and it represents 30% of all sounds in English. Now, it can be very difficult for learners to recognize and in fact, Many students make the mistake of, you know, thinking that the schwa is its own word or they hear a word with the schwa and they don't recognize it because the sounds are weak. Here's another example. Today isn't pronounced today, but this word is pronounced as today. Today. The weak stress is the t and the primary stress is day, today. Or take these other examples, tonight, tomorrow. Because the schwa is the most common sound in English, it is very important that you understand it, the concept of it. Because you can find the schwa in many words, almost all words, I think, uh, such as ability, university, um, open even. And as an unstressed sound, 
The schwa is so easy to miss. So perfecting the schwa sound is a great way to drastically improve your pronunciation, make your speech rhythm much more natural, and also, you know, understand native speakers faster. And we actually focus on this common, easy to overlook sound in the first module of the course, Understand Real American English. As I mentioned before, if a word is supposed to be weak and you really emphasize it, then your English will sound unrhythmic and unnatural and maybe even very difficult to understand. For example, let's take that sentence from earlier, I'm trying to avoid traffic. If you pronounce the word to with a primary stress, like I'm trying to avoid traffic, well that just sounds really strange to native speakers because that to doesn't need to be stressed, it's just to avoid to avoid traffic. Now, however, the word to, T-O-O, is spoken and that word is fully pronounced. This is because to, T-O-O, always comes at the end of a sentence. For example, I'm going to lunch to, the primary stress uh, is on the word to, I'm going to lunch to, because it's at the end of a sentence. And it would, it would sound very strange if you used a schwa at the end of a sentence, like I'm going to lunch to. It's like I'm going to lunch to. Uh, what's the next verb? I'm going to lunch to have something to eat, for example. So it just doesn't sound right to have that schwa at the end of a sentence. It sounds like you're not finished. Now, even though you're using the correct word to, because it's not spoken correctly, then the entire sentence just sounds weird. Now, have you ever noticed other examples of the schwa, like when a word is spoken with the weak stress? And if you have, go ahead and give us some examples in the comments because there are so many examples in spoken American English. And remember, if you're a busy professional who needs to level up your fluency, but you find it difficult to do it alone, let me help you with Master Real American English. It's a three-month program in which my team and I empower you to express yourself more fluently and more naturally so that people focus on your professional skills and your expertise and not on your level of English. And for more information, click the link below where you can apply to join that program today. And thank you so much for learning with Speak English with Christina, and I'll see you next time.